Good day, Traders Mindset Reset. It's uh, Thursday, Free Cash Thursday on a non-farm payrolls Friday week. And uh, we have had absolutely uh, huge opportunities. Again, week after week, rinse and repeat, scale it up in size. Today, I'm going to answer some questions. I'm going to talk about uh, four things that have come up and uh, hopefully address some other questions as I, as I work through this and talk about it. Um, and clarify a few things. Congratulations to the traders who uh, hit the first green day trades on S&P and NASDAQ. And uh, I'll talk about frontside, backside. So a couple questions regarding frontside, backside. And um, as a couple of traders noted in the community in some of the comments, they, they saw obviously we've had trades frontside. We had some excellent opportunities earlier in the week. Uh, oil. Oil has been trending. So one of the questions about oil and gold from a trader was, um, how do you trade those when they're trending? And let me let me sort of clarify this again. I don't try to trade a market because it's trending, because it's moving. I need to see a setup. And the reason why I need to see setups, regardless if they're, you know, continuation trades, low of day, consolidation, a three session setup with gold, um, signal days, First green day, first red day, because those are the signal days that can potentially set up into a best trade candidate. So gold's been all over the place and offered traders massive opportunities, especially end of session, end of days. Uh, again, levels from the levels. Uh, we've had reversal opportunities. We've had trend trade opportunities. But emphasizing setups. Setups, not trading the price action not trading you know i guess uh trying to buy the low or sell the high everything's timed and measured like if you look at gold i don't know how many days in a row we've had third hour third hour trades after major red news higher highs dump and pumps today uh consolidation higher high pin hammer uh explosive move 100 pips third hour um my point is this Signal days have given us textbook opportunities on the front side and the back side. Inside days are so powerful. And traders need to understand what an inside day represents. Sometimes it can, it can represent flipping the book, which means that's the reversal. A double inside day, as I've spoke about in the playbook, is a high indication of an explosive reversal opportunity. We had that on the Japanese yen. A double inside day parabolic explosion, uh, I believe, Monday. Often the explosive move, day one, day two, can lead to an inside day reversal, first green day, first red day opportunity as well. So when we get those setups, those are opportunities that when other time frames are rolling over. So one of the questions I got regarding the Euro Oz trade, which, you know, it's not a secret now on the backside every week, I love to go look for, for one of those to collapse. And when they do, typically, as we saw today on Euro Oz, Pound Oz, Pound New Zealand, Euro New Zealand, Pound Yen crosses. I'll talk, I'll talk about those in a second because I got shellac for, for not talking about them yesterday. Um, is that they're not coming back. They're on a range expansion. And traders are trying to cherry pick off the bottom. Now, remember what Paul Tudor Jones says. Imagine your entry point is last night's closing price. So I talk about timings, levels, behavior of price. There are three levels that I'm looking to take a trade from, depending on the template and the setup. Now, those markets that are distended out, I'm going to go over this later. I apologize. I'm, I wanted to finish this video yesterday, this technical video, and I'll get it done today. But I want to talk about the levels. So levels, when if closing price is, is my ideal entry point, but the market doesn't give me closing price, i.e. NASDAQ S&P, but it's coiled sideways at a level after first green day, inside day coil sideways, right? That's the same trade template as the Canadian dollar, except it's a first green day trade instead of a first red day trade. Pump, consolidate, dump. Dump Tuesday, consolidate Wednesday, first green day, Coiled sideways into major red news. That's a parabolic setup on other time frames. 
So yesterday's short trade on the Euro Oz in the Asian session from closing price, one trader said, well, how do you avoid getting chopped up? There, what, where's the chop up? It, the market's engulfed at closing price and moves sideways. It's an all-in se session. It's all in. Get in. There's no chop. As it's going, add. Add in. The chop is when you're trading candles. I'm trading levels. Move your eyes. Train your eyes to move horizontally at the levels. Which comes to the next point. So for today on first green day on the S&P NASDAQ, the DJ30 dropped down and consolidated sideways underneath Monday's opening range closing price. And it broke out on the news. It did not coil at a level. It was inside closing price and high of day, which is, which is why I said in the community post, that is the weakest one and the ideal candidate for the reversal trade because it made a beautiful uh, topping pattern before Coiling and, and pumping again, one, two, three, and the drop for 100 pips back into high day level, into the breakout of the of the trade, the news release. So the news release acted as the pump. They coiled it sideways, dropped it down, little pump, one, two, three, death candle, and the drop. Uh, whereas the other two were first green day parabolic explosions. They're much stronger. So now you're, you're if traders are trying to short those, obviously there was a bit of pullback, but they went, to closing price on the S&P, I think from Friday, and the NASDAQ was was up above that. But now you're shorting into a market that's that's exploded long. I don't know what it's gonna do now, tomorrow's non-farm payrolls. But again, looking to short weakness and buy strength. First green day, parabolic coil sideways, buy strength, short weakness. Now, closing price. Coming back to my point about closing price. So the markets that are distended out, Again, the Euro Oz, Pound Oz, the Yen Cross pairs. Trader got uh, upset at me yesterday for not going through every single currency pair, saying how great of a trade they were. So I apologize for not doing that. I, you know, in the interest of time, I'm just talking about signal days. Obviously, Yen crosses. I talked about the Euro Yen, first green day. Okay, yeah, the Pound Yen went, the Euro Yen, the Aussie Yen, they all went. So hopefully you're happy now. Uh, Great trade. Now, I want to talk about that. For traders who are trading and they want to buy the low of the week and hold on to it until that trade ends, here's a suggestion. Because I don't, you know, I, I I don't try to do that. If I get in yesterday in first green day in Asia and I'm in at closing price, consider your entry point last night's closing price. That's an opportunity, Asia, to add in in London and to add in in the U.S., so if you're trading a little peanut and you're holding on to it because you'd rather trade the larger move to grow a smaller account, consider this. If you're going to do that, think about once that market is confirming and you're into the new session, or if you're sleeping in during London or you're going into the US, the trade that you're already in the money in, now you can still re-enter that same existing trade with taking the same amount of risk on the original trade, but you're already locked in with profits on that trade. Now you're entering in a second position or a third position, London for the continuation, US for the continuation. Now you could have three positions in the market and that third position is still only risking the same as that very first position that you took in the market. But now you've got the opportunity with three positions in the market over that longer time frame, the whole day, for that parabolic explosion in order to maximize the, the the maximum amount out of a winning trade that you can. So still have the same risk as that very first position. Okay, you could take a smaller position because you, you obviously you want a, the sleep factor. You just want to hold on to it for the larger move. You can add in in the new session once it confirms. Might pop down a little bit, confirm. Pops down a little bit in the US, major red news, new hour starts, bang. Second, third position in the market. Now you're capitalizing and you're scaling a, a winning trade up so rather than risking one percent and getting you know 100 pips you're risking one percent but you're going to end up getting maybe three times as much out of that trade just a suggestion so inside days closing price what i was going to say about closing price is these markets that are distended out okay so you're you've got traders that are trying to cherry pick off the bottoms of these markets right now and they're probably not going to go anywhere they're probably going to sit down there for the entire U.S. session in a, an hourly high, low range and consolidate. But guess what happens when they close? Asia starts. We could get 
uh, reversal. We could get a trade in London, whatever, because now they've got three sessions coiled down low, perhaps, or 12 hours coiled sideways. So the trade can be on free cash Friday off of closing price. It could be in London, it may be in Asia, depends on how that market sets up and closes into the session. So remember that when those markets are distended out, cherry picking is not a trade setup. Cherry picking is not a trade setup. Now, talking about that behavior of the trader, I wanna just go back to some simple basic concepts, two to three best trade candidates in a week. Because, uh, as I see, as I said, and I repeat this, best trade parabolic candidates that are actual trade setups driven by other time frame traders, such as the Euro Oz, when they go on a range expansion, lower low on Tuesday, it's a first red day template on Wednesday on the Euro Oz. So what that means is uh, it's pumped up above closing price and reverse later in the day. So we've, it's, We've had a first red day already, but that's a first red day template heading into the backside of the week, drops down and coils at closing price and goes on a range expansion. It's not coming back today. And those are the trades that compound your account. So my suggestion, as I said, with the Canadian dollar is go back through your templates, the signal days, and I'll, I'll address this, a, a trader didn't like the fact that I said yesterday, you know, blowing off three pushes, M's and W's, and trying to count levels and all that. Let me explain to you why. Let me explain to you why. Because if you're doing that all the time, good luck reproducing your results. If you have a setup, that's different. If you have a peak formation low, a lower low on a Tuesday, and you have an inside day, or you have a first red day pattern on a Wednesday, and you get a trade setup. So Wednesday is day three. Guess what we can see on a Wednesday? We can see three peaks or three, three troughs, a reversal pattern. That's when it matters is when you have a setup. So I'm not minimizing that. What I'm suggesting is understanding what a setup is. Me trying to analyze a market and draw levels and guess and all that, I can count one, two, three. Day one, day two, day three. Do I have a setup? If I don't have a setup, why would I waste time trying to figure out what the market's doing? If a market's trending and I don't have a setup, am I gonna do that or am I gonna look for something that's easy and simple that I can scale into? 25, 50 pips, be done and dusted. Or sit around for a couple hours to get more pips on a market that is potentially maybe not gonna give me that or it's gonna be harder to trade. Again, I'm looking for the easy rinse and repeat opportunities. Explosive moves. My choice, that's me. And again, I'm talking to myself at the same time. I'm telling you how I think uh, because as I mentioned yesterday, full circle back to simplicity. Simple, simple, scalable, easy, repeatable, money-making setups. Counting pushes, drawing levels, trying to find an M or a W, all that sort of stuff is crazy. To me, that's insane because you will never be consistent and reproduce that. So if I insulted anybody saying that, uh, my apologies, but you shouldn't be insulted if you are rock solid on the setups and you understand how to trade them. If you know what you're doing and you've got your setups, nothing anybody says or does matters. It shouldn't have any bearing whatsoever on your thought process. My mindset is simple. I want scalable, reproducible, rinse and repeat opportunities. That Asia backside trade every week, as I mentioned, it's be becoming one of my largest trades. And I just sit around and wait till day one, day two, day three. Do I have any of the pairs setting up for either a a long trade or a short trade. And of course, I tend to see short stuff a little bit easier, um, but I do love a nice sideways coil for a parabolic long explosive trade. Train your eyes to move horizontally. When it moves horizontally, it's coiling. Think of it that way, whether you're going short or whether you're going long, depending on what the setup is. So behavior of the trader is this. Behavior of the trader, like if you can manage yourself, and you actually have two or three really uh, frequently repeatable setups that show up every week over the 20 instruments, whether it's in Asia, London, or New York, or maybe a couple in each session, as I said, currency index and a commodity, you know, and of course, every single one of them has given us that parabolic opportunity. If you can sit on your hands and actually trade a setup, a setup, just like on the Canadian dollar, just like on the, the indexes today, one parabolic scalable opportunity 
times three markets, three of those, you can significantly compound your account. But it's all the other stuff that traders and myself included have done in the past to sabotage those good results. Trading at random times, impulsive trades, overconfidence, over leveraging, uh, just just random f taking positions in the market and then averaging into those things or holding on to a loser. So for example, when they go out, when they go on a range expansion, when they break out in Asia on a Thursday, I love that because I know, I know when it's set up with certain templates, they aren't coming back. Like I, I just know that traders are counter trending that and they aren't coming back because they're going to go on a range expansion. Pound, New Z uh, Pound Aussie did a full range expansion of the high low of, of the range. So there's there's certain templates, if you study them, the DCBs, they're six figure trading setups because they'll grow significantly to six and seven figures. You And they show up again and again and again. So behavior of the trader is this, is, is, is being willing to step back and, and be patient and just execute setups that you can't lose on. Execute trading setups that you can't lose on. That's the whole point. Train yourself. Train yourself. Develop a routine around all of that so that you're not engaging in impulsive behavior, that you're not doing self-destructive things. Uh, train your brain to understand that there's only tr certain trades that are actually trading for you. And those are the ones that you can't lose on. When you can't lose on a trade, the only thing that can screw it up is whether you do things in that trade itself to either decrease how much you can make on it or go in too heavy on a, on a real great winning setup too early, too much heat, all those sorts of things, getting shaken out from size or being willing to develop that expertise and just learning, scaling in, taking profits, managing the trade, hold, knowing when to hold on, knowing when to... Just exit, nail and bail. Like today, uh, DJ30. Okay, we're down low. We're down low. Day one, day two, day three. So Tuesday, dump day, consolidation. We're down low. It gave a nice reversal trade, but it's a, it's a scalp. It's a session, 100 pips. It's a session trade. Why? Because we're down low. If it blew off the top on day three at the high of the month or the high of the week, whatever, and broke down and consolidated at the high, we could see that thing potentially not only take out the low of the day, but maybe turn into a first red day. No idea. But it's a session trade. We're down low. Beautiful reversal opportunity. The weakest of the three indexes. Just an example of a great reversal trade on a breakout down low in a market that's showing weakness compared to the other two indexes. And tomorrow's free cash Friday. So in, in closing, understand that uh, Friday, so some traders today were looking for a pump up into closing price and a dump on gold and all that. We're still, we're still front side. Like, don't look, don't look to counter trend a huge bull market. Let the market break down first and give you a shorting opportunity for easy money where you can't lose. Trying to counter trend a market that's being driven by other time frame traders hasn't even broken a daily low. Not even close. Not even close. Now we could get that. We could. We could roll over tomorrow. Could roll over, break down. Um, but wait for it to set up for the easy money. When it goes, when it breaks down at some point, which it will. It'll break down and give us a great shorting opportunity for a range expansion, whether that's in London and we get low-hanging fruit in the U.S., whatever that is. But trying to counter-trend to catch a move on a market like that right now is very dangerous. The easy money's made right now on the upside. Third hour, boom, 100 pips. Learn to tell time, count to three, and it's easy as one, two, three. So on that... Um, the behavior of the trader, so important. That is the issue. That really is the issue. The trade setups are pretty simple. Mastering yourself, mastering impulsiveness, impatience, self-sabotaging behavior, all those things are uh, always at the door. And as I explained to traders, it's a battle, a 1% better every day battle of constant progress. And this is why, this is why when traders... You know, they want to watch live trading. They want to see your brokerage account. They want to see your tax returns and everything else, thinking that that actually needs to be proven and then validate something. But here's the problem. You can, all ha you can have all that. 
except that traders will still go out and do damage, won't trade the setups properly, won't have the skill to hold on to a winner, they'll average into a loser, they won't, they'll miss trades, uh, they don't have a routine, they don't have a process, they don't actually understand what the setups are, they don't even have a setup, they're just trading. They think they're trading setups, but they're not. And so then they jump over to something else and they want to see their brokerage statements. They want to watch somebody else trade live. Look, there's there's got to be over 100 live trading channels. And, and, and this is what's funny. People, yeah, but just show us one live trade. What is that actually going to do for you? What is that going to do for you? Like realistically, okay, there's a live trade. Now what? Now what are you going to do tomorrow? It's a totally different setup. Like you don't even know, you, you saw it and now you watch the video over and over again. And tomorrow's a totally different setup. And you go, well, you need to do that one live. You, you don't, you don't, you don't watch. And, and trust me, I don't care what anybody says. That's entertainment. That is entertainment. If you're serious, you got all the chat room shut off. When it's trading time and it's go time, if you're serious, if it's a hobby, that's one thing. But if you're seriously trying to get it and grow it to seven plus figures, eight figures or more. What, why would you be interested in doing all that? Why would you be interested in being on chat rooms, trading live? Is that for self recognition or is that for, uh, you know, popularity, growing a channel, whatever that is. You know, one guy said to me yesterday, Oh, you hope you make more from your YouTube channel than you do from your trading. Well, I don't get that. What's that all about? I mean, Ray Dalio is a billionaire. He's got a YouTube channel. What's wrong with having a YouTube channel? What am I supposed to do? Drive around all day in a nice shiny new car and wave to people? I mean, where is your headspace at when you're thinking like that? And there's a 99% of the community are focused, dedicated, and driven at becoming 1% better every single day. Discretionary trading is a high performance skill. It's a performance skill. And so if you're interested in watching, just Google live trading and go watch one of those channels. When I'm on the screen, I have everything shut off. I have everything shut off. I've said this before. I have one chart up. So today, NASDAQ, I got one chart. And one trader said, well, I thought the S&P was cleaner. It was a great chart. It did move more. It was a, it was a same setup. I just chose the NASDAQ. Um, Execute the trade, make some money, lock it in, and who cares? Like, that's it. That's the trade. I had two range expansions as a target. We're getting towards the New York Open. Lock in the money, get off the screen. DJ30 offered a nice little reversal scalp. Lock in the money, get off the screen. Like, where else can you work an hour a day on average and make, make six, seven figures a year? Where? It's a skill. If you're a cardiac surgeon, it's a skill. If you're an engineer, it's a skill. If you're a professional athlete, it's a skill. All of those things are developed through repetition, through hardwiring your nervous system, developing an expertise on where your weaknesses are, whether it's in your headspace. You know, like I got people who get offended when I call it free cash, free cash Friday, they get offended by that. And I said, you know, one gentleman said to me, uh, that's really low class of you. You're better than that. And I said, maybe you should reverse your thinking. And it's a low class person who sees that in another person. You only reflect what you, what you see in yourself. So if you want to create abundance, expertise, health, wellness, financial freedom for generational income, who and what do you need to become in order to produce those results in your own life? I'm not out here judging what anybody else does. I don't, I don't even care. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. And so if you can minimize, it's all about minimization constantly. What are these setups that make me the most money? Then why don't I just trade those? Sit on my hands, dum da dum da dum And there's other little session trades that are easy money, bread and butter, grocery money, right? But then when I have the chance for all-in opportunities, that's where you can make a lot of money. Those are the ones that really significantly grow your account. Simplicity. Simplicity. Clean this out. You know, talking about myself, there I told you, years of self-sabotaging behavior, constant battle of reprogramming 
routines, processes, self-talk, every single thing that can ensure your success. Bulletproof yourself for success so that you cannot fail. And if there's people that feel threatened by that or don't like it, delete them out of your life. You don't need garbage in your life. Surround yourself with the people that are going to lift you up to the next level and take you there. If you're willing to do the work, and 99.9% .9 of that work is going to be on the trader and the individual themselves. So that's my little spiel, behavior of the trader. It all starts right here, right here. The trade setups aren't going to change. The trade setups are not going to change. You haven't missed anything. Now, I don't care. In closing, I'll say this. I don't care how much damage or how much losing you've done. It's repairable. It's repairable. And I've told you this. There's not. I, I, I have done everything wrong you can do in trading. I have done everything wrong you can do in trading. Times 10. And... It's a game of constant progress. You can come back from that. The great thing about the markets is this. They're scalable. So scale it up slowly. You can 10 times, you can 20 times all the damage and losses and bad experiences, trauma. You can change everything. One great trade at a time. Starts with you, the trader. Uh, tomorrow's Free Cash Friday. It's a non-farm payrolls Friday. We'll look for a best trade candidate if there is indeed one. Hopefully, uh, traders got value out of today's mindset reset. That's my little spiel for the week. <laughs> Congratulations. We've had some fantastic playbook, textbook trade setups this week. Again, indexes, commodities, gold, currencies. So it's going to be the same thing next week. Nothing will change, traders. Just a matter of sitting on our hands and waiting for the best candidates to show up on the trades that you cannot lose on. Keep it simple. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day and may the markets go with you.